Hey guys, Jim here. I wanted to share with you another new acquisition, something that just came in the mail to me today. I actually got here a lot faster than I expected it to. It only took a couple of days. Uh, this is the Alan Foltz Inertia. Uh, Alan Foltz does nothing but completely custom knives. He's one of the very few guys that you can contact, give him a silly sketch of a knife, and he will actually make it. I mean, it's it's incredible. He will make you a complete custom from the ground up, which is kind of refreshing. You don't hear that all too often anymore these days. You usually pick from a certain amount of models that they have, and they'll have a sketch or a picture or, or a CAD drawing. And then maybe you can modify pieces, parts, and components. But he really will do something from the ground up. But the Inertia is one of his models that he offers for sale. And he does a few different variations, but each one is completely one of a kind. Everything is completely handmade. And what struck me about this one uh, in particular was the color combination. The original one that I wanted uh, a few weeks back, it turns out when I hit the buy button, somebody else hit the buy button at pretty much the same time, and, and theirs beat me out by about 30 seconds. And uh, the dealer actually contacted me and said, oh, you know, your order came in at the same time, but I got to honor his first. And it was done with purple titanium and something I had never seen before, which was purple lightning strike carbon fiber. It was incredibly gorgeous. So ever since I saw that and lost out on it, I had wanted an inertia. Lo and behold, I just happened to come across this one sitting on the same dealer's website and went, you know what, I'm going to pull the trigger on this. It's unique. I've never seen a teal blue titanium before and it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the components here, obviously titanium in the bolsters, titanium liners done in the uh, teal blue or teal green, however you want to look at it. And then you've got polished black and gray G10 for the scales, titanium backspacer, stainless steel pocket clip, and the blade, which is CPM 154, is really quite interesting. Uh, the blade profile on it is absolutely beautiful. It is a flipper. It's not broken in yet, so I wouldn't expect it to really, you know, be a wowser kind of thing. That one actually it opened up pretty nice that time. And here what you've got, as you can see, that is perfectly mirror polished on the grinds. There is Alan Foltz's name. What he's done is a very, very dark stone wash on the blade and then done these beautiful, perfect mirror polish grinds. And up at the harpoon tip, that one is also done in a mirror polish. It's actually quite a breathtaking blade when you take it all in. It is sexy. It is gorgeous. The way that he's done the liners in that teal blue. This really is a work of art and that's really what uh, what his background is. He started out life really as an artist, did painting, did sculpting, worked with iron, worked with copper, worked with different kinds of metals, and then decided uh, as, as an extension of that to do knives. So what you're getting with everything that you buy from, from Alan Foltz is, is an artist's representation of a knife. You're getting something that's of complete hand-built quality. And you'll, you'll find those little flaws here and there that let you know that you are buying a hand-built knife. One of the little flaws that I noticed was right there on the liner lock. Just a couple little nicks where the, the file went over just a little bit too far. Uh, you know, and the other unfortunate thing about that is you're not always going to get a 100% perfect knife. Uh, this came with some scratches on the bolster, and I don't know if that came from handling by the maker or handling by the dealer. I mean, anything can happen. And the dealer most likely picked this up at the blade show. And at that point, you know, it could have been, you know, 200 people that handled this knife on the table. And as you guys know, a lot of times at the shows, even when something is sold, they'll still want to display it. And they'll just put a little sold tag on it. And that really doesn't prevent uh, the random Yahoo from picking up the knife and playing with it and screwing around with it. But, uh, you know, it's just very, very small cosmetic thing. I love this futuristic look of the entire knife from the way the blade is profiled to just, you know, simple things like these three little holes 
having the dark stone wash against the mirror polish, these notches that are cut out of the bolsters and out of the liners. There's something futuristic, almost alien-like to me about this. I'm fine with CPM 154. It's great steel. This is not a knife that I would honestly be taking out and doing any kind of crazy, ridiculous cutting tasks with anyway. And like I always say, if it's the knife that's in my pocket that day and the need arises, it absolutely will be used to cut things. But I'm not going to you know, purposefully go out and try to abuse more of an artistic kind of knife like this. Uh, it is smaller than I anticipated. Uh, I knew it was going to be a three and a quarter inch blade, but it's so slender and slim in all of its dimensions, it actually plays, in my opinion, like it's a little bit smaller. Uh, seven and three quarter inches overall. It's about four and a half ounces, a little bit less. And like I said, the, the, the workmanship is fantastic. It doesn't quite want to flip just yet. And it could just need a little bit of lube. I'm really not sure at this point how I feel about it 100%. I look at it and I fall in love. I mean, this is a drool-worthy knife. This is the kind of knife that when you see pictures of it, you're like, wow, I've got to have that. And that's exactly the response that I had. And even as I hold it, I, I appreciate the workmanship and the fine art, the design that went into it, the incredible work that went into that blade. Y'all don't even realize unless you've you know, contacted a lot of different makers and made that request. I've requested mirror polish blades from a number of, of different uh, makers, and some wouldn't do it based on the type of steel they had. Some steels actually will not take a nice mirror polish. And some just go, it's too difficult for me to achieve and get 100% perfect, not have any waviness in it, not screw up and go above the grind line. And it's, it's too hard to keep going back and correcting and correcting and correcting. So I would much rather give you a satin finish or a brushed finish or some other finish. So I look at this and go, wow, this is, this is really something super special. But then I looked at the I look at the practicality of it, and you know, you guys know how I am. If I'm not going to carry it and I'm not going to use it, it's generally not going to stay in my collection. I'm not the type of collector that just sits there and looks at my knives and says, "Oh wow, look at the pretty, pretty thing that I have." I really want to get use out of it because, to me, uh, over and above everything else, a knife is still going to be a tool. Uh, it could be an eight hundred dollar tool; it doesn't matter. It's still a tool. You know, nobody sits around and just stares at their hammers and Allen wrenches, do they? And if they do, they're, they're probably a little screwed up in the head and might want to keep an eye on them. That's the one that will be described on the news in a few years as, well, he was such a quiet neighbor. Yeah, keep an eye on that guy. So I'm, I'm, you know, the jury's kind of out. I'm always going to be honest in every video that I do. Not everything I get is going to be the most amazing, great, wonderful thing. I like to think that I choose some good knives. And the ones that stay in my collection have stayed there for a reason because they really are uh, functional works of art. And while this is a masterfully sculpted work of art, I just don't know how much pocket time it would really see. And the only reason I'm not really funneling it a bit more is because, you know, on video, I don't want to have a whole bunch of fingerprints all over it. You know, this is, you want it to kind of look nice, especially if you're watching this in HD. He does an astounding job. Uh, certainly no doubt about that. The quality is incredible. The camera does not want to focus because of the reflectivity. There we go. Uh, from what I've surmised, it's a pretty sharp blade. Not really cut anything with it because I'm undecided. I might be uh, sending this one right back. It might be getting packed up tomorrow and going back on Monday. You know, the jury's still kind of out on that. And as I sit here and I stare at it, I even second guess even thinking about that. It is a beauty. But is it a beauty I'm going to do anything with? I don't know. And the other thing is, when I buy a flipper, I really, really, really want a flipper. Especially in this price range. When I hit that flipper, that thing should fly open like it's possessed. And this doesn't. And I've had knives that do that and broken in quite well, you know, uh, a la Hinderer. But they still weren't lightning fast like some of my other knives are. So that's the other thing. Uh, it's got to be perfectly functional. Uh, for its intended purpose, which this is a flipper. So, I don't know, the jury's kind of out. What do you guys think of it? Leave me some comments down below and let me know. I mean, besides, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is beautiful. There, there's no way I can deny that. 
And if I was that guy that just had this sitting in a display cabinet, I probably would keep it just based on when am I going to come across something else this beautiful. Uh, but quite honestly, if it was a quarter inch to a half inch larger, and it felt a little bit beefier, less like an art knife and more like a, it doesn't have to be a tactical, but more like a practical EDC folding knife, then I think I'd be more inclined to keep it. I think at that point, it wouldn't be as hard of a decision. For practicality, every part of my being says, ah, you really don't need this. And then I look at it again, and I look at that beautiful teal, and I look at the workmanship that goes into how he made this knife by hand. Even the way that he polished the black and gray G10, this beautiful fade out, it's, you know, it is remarkable in every sense. I just don't know if, uh, if I'm going to be able to bond with it. But as far as workmanship goes, uh, easily justifies the price that I paid, and probably more so. So I think uh, maybe the best decision is I should look over his website and see what other models he offers. And maybe he'll even make one for me that's a half inch larger, a little bit beefier, a little bit more stout. Maybe make a frame lock. Ooh, wouldn't that be nice? Because again, he is a custom maker that will make you anything you want. And you know what? I think I may have just answered my own question. So anyway, let me know what you think of it down below. Don't know how much longer I'm going to keep it in my possession or if I will at all. So uh, I'd like to see what you guys think of it. All right, guys. Have a good one.